We're diving into Soft Actor Critic, SAC, a cutting-edge reinforcement learning algorithm. It's known for combining two powerful ideas, actor critic methods and the maximum entropy framework. This unique combination enhances both exploration and exploitation, making it particularly effective in continuous control tasks. SAC is an off-policy algorithm. This means it doesn't rely only on the most recent interactions with the environment. Instead, it learns from a replay buffer filled with past experiences. This approach is super data efficient, which is a big deal when collecting new data is slow or expensive. Let's explore it in four parts. The Soft Actor Critic Architecture. How does SAC handle exploration and exploitation? How does entropy regularization specifically influence exploration in SAC? The main advantages of SAC over PPO. Now let's explore how Soft Actor Critic Architecture achieves this. The first. Key components of SAC. 1. The Actor Network. Think of the actor as the decision maker. It's a neural network that produces a probability distribution over actions for a given state. SAC uses a stochastic policy, meaning the agent doesn't stick rigidly to one action, but explores a range of possibilities. This flexibility is key for adapting to dynamic environments. 2. The Critic Network The critic's job is to evaluate the actor's choices. It estimates the value of taking specific actions in particular states. To reduce overestimation errors often seen in queue learning, SAC uses two separate queue networks for this task. 3. Replay Buffer This is where all past experiences are stored. States, actions, rewards, and next states. During training, the algorithm samples from this buffer, allowing it to reuse valuable past data. This is a major factor behind SAC's efficiency. 4. Entropy Regularization Here's where SAC really stands out. It includes an entropy term in its objective function. In simple terms, this encourages the policy to keep its options open by maintaining some randomness in its actions. This avoids the trap of settling too early on a strategy that might be suboptimal. The second, objective of SAC. The goal of SAC can be expressed as this formula. Here's what this means. QSA is the value the critic assigns to a state action pair. Pi represents the policy's action probabilities. Alpha is a parameter that adjusts the balance between prioritizing rewards and keeping the policy exploratory. By maximizing this function, SAC ensures the agent seeks high rewards while staying curious about other possibilities. The third, why use SAC? One, better exploration. Thanks to entropy maximization, the agent explores a wider range of actions, which can lead to finding better strategies. Two, efficient learning. It reuses data from the replay buffer, making it much more sample efficient than algorithms like PPO. 3. Stability. With two Q networks, SAC reduces overestimation bias, ensuring smoother learning. It's also robust to variations in settings like random seeds or hyperparameters. 4. Great performance. SAC consistently outperforms other methods, such as DDPG and TD3, in tasks like robotic manipulation and locomotion. In summary, SAC is a big step forward in reinforcement learning. Its combination of exploration, stability, and efficiency makes it a go-to choice for tackling challenging decision-making problems in fields like robotics, gaming, and beyond. Its maximum entropy approach ensures a smart balance between curiosity and reward-seeking, which is a game-changer in RL. Soft Actor Critic is an advanced reinforcement learning, RL, algorithm that skillfully manages the trade-off between exploration, trying new actions to learn more, and exploitation, leveraging known information to maximize rewards. Let's break down how SAC achieves this. The first. Stochastic policy with entropy regularization. SAC relies on a stochastic policy, meaning the agent doesn't just choose a single action, but samples actions based on a probability distribution. This approach naturally supports exploration since different actions can be selected from the same state over time. The key innovation in SAC is the inclusion of an entropy term in its objective function. 
Entropy represents the randomness of the action distribution, encouraging the agent to maintain a diverse range of actions. The objective becomes this formula. Here, QS A evaluates how good it is to take action. A in state S. Alpha controls the balance between maximizing rewards and maintaining exploration. Increasing alpha emphasizes exploration, while decreasing it focuses more on exploitation. The second, twin Q networks for stability. SAC employs two Q networks to estimate the value of state action pairs. Because this reduces overestimation bias, a common issue in reinforcement learning where agents might incorrectly believe certain actions are better than they are. These twin Q networks work together to provide a conservative estimate of the action values, ensuring the policy doesn't prematurely focus on exploiting suboptimal actions. This makes learning more stable and helps the agent switch smoothly between exploring and exploiting. The third, off-policy learning with replay buffer. SAC is an off-policy algorithm, meaning it learns from a replay buffer, a storage of past experiences. Instead of relying only on recent interactions, SAC can revisit and learn from older experiences, which enhances exploration and efficiency. This mechanism allows SAC to try different actions and strategies, even if those actions were not selected recently, providing a richer learning experience. The fourth, adaptive temperature adjustment. The temperature parameter alpha is a critical part of SAC. It determines how much weight is given to the entropy term thereby directly controlling the trade-off between exploration and exploitation. SAC can adjust alpha dynamically during training, ensuring the agent explores sufficiently early on and exploits effectively as training progresses. This adaptability allows SAC to perform well across a variety of environments, each with its own balance requirements. The fifth, focused testing phase. When SAC is deployed in a testing or evaluation phase, it shifts to a deterministic mode by selecting actions based on the mean of the learned action distribution rather than sampling stochastically. This ensures the agent focuses on exploiting the best strategies it has learned. This transition minimizes unnecessary randomness during execution, improving task performance while leveraging the exploration-driven training phase. In summary, Soft Actor Critic excels in reinforcement learning, by effectively balancing exploration and exploitation through entropy regularization, stable value estimation with twin Q networks, and sample-efficient off-policy learning. Its adaptive temperature tuning and strategic evaluation adjustments further enhance flexibility and robustness, making it an ideal choice for tackling complex continuous control problems with stability and efficiency. Entropy regularization is a key component in the soft actor critic algorithm playing a vital role in encouraging exploration. Let me break down how it works and why it's essential. The first, what does entropy regularization do? The goal of SAC isn't just to maximize rewards. It also aims to maximize the entropy of the policy. Entropy measures the randomness in the action choices. Here's the objective function SAC uses this formula. In this formula, the term QSA measures how good an action is in a given state. The entropy term negative alpha pi encourages the policy to maintain diversity in its action choices. By maximizing this entropy, the agent explores more and avoids getting stuck in a narrow range of actions too early. The second, diversity in actions matter. When entropy is high, the policy is uncertain about which action to take and as a result, it samples from a wide range of possibilities. This diversity in action selection is essential for discovering better strategies and avoiding premature convergence on suboptimal actions. The temperature parameter alpha controls how much weight is given to entropy. A higher alpha emphasizes exploration, trying new actions, while a lower alpha focuses on exploitation, sticking to what works. This adaptability helps the agent adjust its behavior based on the environment. The third, prevent premature convergence. In reinforcement learning, there's a risk of the agent exploiting early successes and missing out on better strategies. Entropy regularization keeps the agent's action selection random enough to continue exploring alternative strategies, even as it learns which actions lead to rewards. The fourth, help the agent learn faster. 
By exploring a broader range of actions, the agent encounters more states and rewards, which provide valuable learning opportunities. This broader experience helps the agent refine its policy more effectively, speeding up the learning process compared to methods that prioritize exploitation from the start. The fifth, stochastic policy. SAC's reliance on a stochastic policy means that actions are sampled from a distribution rather than being deterministic. This randomness is crucial for exploration, as it enables the agent to try various strategies and adapt to different environments. The sixth, the level of exploration change over time. SAC can adjust the temperature parameter alpha dynamically during training. Early on, a higher alpha encourages exploration when the agent knows little about the environment. Later, as the agent learns effective strategies, alpha can decrease, allowing the agent to exploit its knowledge while still exploring occasionally. In summary, Entropy regularization enables SAC to balance exploration and exploitation by encouraging randomness in action selection and promoting diverse behavior. This approach prevents premature convergence, exposes the agent to more states and rewards, and accelerates learning. As a result, SAC adapts effectively to complex tasks and varying environments, maintaining both stability and efficiency throughout training. Both soft actor critic SAC and Proximal Policy Optimization, PPO, are popular algorithms in reinforcement learning, but they have distinct features that make them better suited for different types of tasks. Let's go over the key advantages of SAC when compared to PPO. The first, off-policy learning. SAC is an off-policy algorithm, meaning it learns from a replay buffer containing past experiences. This allows SAC to reuse old data and make better use of it, which improves sample efficiency, especially in environments where generating new data is expensive or slow. PPO, on the other hand, is an on-policy algorithm, which means it needs fresh data collected from the current policy to learn. Because of this, PPO tends to be less sample efficient as it cannot make use of past experiences. The second, exploration through entropy maximization. SAC incorporates entropy maximization directly into its objective function. This means that SAC actively promotes exploration by encouraging a diverse set of actions. This helps the agent avoid prematurely settling on a suboptimal solution and ensures it explores a wide variety of actions during training. PPO does use entropy as a regularizer to encourage exploration, but it doesn't make it a central part of the optimization objective like SAC does. As a result, SAC is generally better at exploration, especially in complex environments where you need the agent to try a wide variety of actions. The third, stability and robustness. SAC uses two Q networks to reduce overestimation bias, a common problem in value-based methods. This architecture leads to more stable learning and reliable value estimates, making SAC robust across a variety of tasks and environments. PPO, while stable due to its clipped objective function, can experience fluctuations in performance, especially when hyperparameters aren't well-tuned. It doesn't handle overestimation bias as effectively as SAC does. The fourth, performance in continuous action spaces. SAC is designed for continuous action spaces. It excels in tasks that require fine control, such as robotic manipulation or tasks involving complex simulations. The stochastic policy in SAC makes it particularly suited for smoothly selecting actions across a continuous range. PPO can handle both discrete and continuous action spaces, but its performance in continuous tasks may not be as fine-tuned as SAC's, which is specifically optimized for this. The fifth, sample efficiency in expensive environments. SAC is more sample efficient in environments where collecting new data is expensive. Since SAC can reuse past experiences, thanks to being off policy, it is particularly advantageous when data collection is limited or costly. PPO, being on policy, may require more new data and thus be less efficient in environments with expensive data collection. The sixth, adaptive exploration. SAC has a unique feature with its temperature parameter, which allows it to dynamically adjust the level of exploration during training. This means the agent can adapt its exploration strategy depending on how much it has learned and the characteristics of the environment. 
PPO does have an entropy regularization term for exploration, but it doesn't have a built-in mechanism for dynamically tuning the level of exploration based on the learning progress, unlike SACE. C. In summary, soft actor critic surpasses proximal policy optimization in several key aspects, including its off-policy learning capability, which enhances sample efficiency, and its use of entropy maximization to promote robust exploration. With twin Q networks ensuring stable value estimation and adaptive temperature tuning for flexible exploration, SAC excels in continuous action spaces and environments where data collection is expensive. These attributes make it particularly effective for solving complex tasks that demand extensive exploration and efficiency.